little intruder. Little intruder in my shop. We recently had heavy rains. Uh, and I found this guy made a little nest in the car cover for my CRX. And in turn, there was three babies inside that nest. Put the babies in the box with a hole in the box. I'm hoping I can get this little fucker inside that box. So I can take that box and put somewhere other than my shop. I have no clue where I'm going to put that, but I don't want this little fucker in my shop. And I don't want to kill him, because that's not how I am. Goddamn little mouse. What's going on YouTube? Back in the garage again. Uh, in this video we're going to start reassembling the Honda Grom motor. Uh, hopefully I can get it all together today. Uh, I ordered two different crank pulleys, uh, crank pullers, and neither of them are large enough diameter to get on to the crank to pull it through the bearing, uh, which totally sucks. It's a large enough diameter for the other side of the crank, but not the one I need to pull on. So I gotta figure out a way around it, maybe even make uh, uh, attachments for the puller so I can actually pull on it. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. But yeah, uh, before we get into it, please like and subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, let's just jump right into it and get this motor put back together. Right here we have the uh, side casing, uh, crank case, that I need to install the new bearing. And also I need to put the new crank through the bearing and somehow press it into the bearing without obviously damaging the crank. It would really suck if it's a brand new bearing, brand new crank. It would suck if I damage it. But before I do that, I'm going to clean the surface here of all uh, Honda Bond uh, sealer on it. Uh, what I'm going to use, a little fucking mouse, man. Keep on seeing them running across the floor. <laughs> I'm looking for his babies. They're running by the box. Like, try to move in the box to more of the center of the damn floor because the thing keeps on running right in the middle of the freaking shop. Maybe. Ooh, motherfucker. <laughs> Almost ran up my leg. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get bit by a fucking mouse today. <laughs> Anyway, uh, what I'm going to use is actually uh, a white cleaning pad. It's not a scotch bright pad. It's not prepping for his paint pad or anything like that. It's meant for cleaning surfaces like this. So, what I'm I cut a, as you can see, I cut a little section off. I don't need the whole pad. I'm going to take some genuine Honda oil and pour a little bit of oil onto the pad I'm going to use to clean and that'll make it it's gonna make it glide a little nicer and the oil will help the debris stick to the pad uh, it should make it clean up real nice so I'm just gonna lightly take it rub the pad on all the surfaces that uh, ultimately I'm going to be putting uh, Honda Bond back on to seal it back up. Uh, after I've scrubbed it with that white pad, I'm going, I hit it with some brake clean and blew it out. Uh, now I'm going to take a little bit of Honda oil and re-lubricate the bearings that are already in it. going to take some more oil and I'm going to lubricate the spot where I need to press the bearing in hopefully that will help me it should help me put the bearing in without having to heat anything up uh, hopefully I can get away with not having to heat it up. Uh, I'm also going to take some oil 
put it on the outside of the bearing. Get the hole nice and looped. And here we go. I'm going to try to put this bearing in. Uh, the letters are going to be facing towards me, towards the center of the casing. Get nice and square. try tapping it with a rubber mallet see if that will do the trick if not I'm going to have to come up with something else all right so it's starting to go I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a socket just the same diameter as the outer casing of the bearing and first I'll put microfiber cloth on it so I don't damage the bearing then I'll put a socket on it and I'll really hit it with a mini sledge or something just down some of that this Alright, so yeah, I got the bearing in. Uh, what I did was I just took a microfiber cloth and a mini sledge and lightly hammered it down. Uh, just kept on going around. Uh, every now and then I check, make sure it's not going in sideways or something like that. If it is, I correct it. And once it is about to drop, you'll feel it. It'll, it'll just drop right in. So that's good. I didn't have to heat it up or anything like that. So next, oil here. Uh, next is I'm going to hopefully put the crank in. I gotta figure out a good way of doing that so I don't uh, bend the crank. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to lube this bearing up, just like I did with the other ones. Time for the new crank. I have no idea how I'm going to pull this off. Obviously when doing this you don't want to smack the top here. You just end up bending your crank. This is what I was talking about. This is the threads right here. Uh, are the ones that I need to actually pull on. Let's see something else here. Yeah. And this crank looks like it goes all the way down to the step where it hits, meets the bearing. That will give you the, the uh, proper spacing, I believe. The mouse found its babies that I put in a box. And now, let's see if I can catch it on film. She's going back. She keeps on carrying, there should be one more baby she has to carry out of the box. I don't know where she's taking them. Hey, she got her baby. So I think I might have actually figured out a solution to getting this crank through. What I'm using is the nut for the clutch basket screwed up uh, well I put the one part of the uh, the crank cooler on the crank then I put that uh, nut on for the, the clutch screwed that all the way down so it grabs all the threads then what I did was I drilled out the center of this tool made it larger there was originally a hole there I just made it larger so it can slip over the crank and in turn it'll drop past the nut for the uh, the nut that is used for the clutch. Spin up the other section. Screw that in. And in turn, I should be able to pull. We'll see. Let's try this out. Like that. This is going to be 
square. Okay, take the nut. Put the nut on. I'm going to use an adjustable wrench for this. And I positioned the crank rod. I've kind of taped it up so when you torque this down, uh, the crank rod is in the position it needs to be so it doesn't get caught stuck inside the casing itself. Uh, so let me get my adjustable and cross my fingers. Hopefully uh, I have enough adjustment. Uh, pull on tool to get it the crank through the bearing completely. Now, this isn't the ideal way I'm doing it. Normally you would want to put it on some two by or four by fours and have no pressure on the crank whatsoever. But the tool is actually centering it exactly where you need plus I'm not pressing down on the on the crank it's just kind of propped up on it for a short period of time all right come back when it's uh, settled it seems to be going perfectly fine now I think I might have gotten it. Let's check here. What I'm going to do. Obviously, take this whole thing apart. Now, I'm look at the old crank. According to the old crank, there's a hole right here where it pokes right out of the bearing. I'm gonna measure that and see if I have the same distance. All right, so it ended up working out that I didn't need to order another tool. So just to review what I did, since the nuts that the, this tool provides would normally go on over the crank here and thread on, they weren't it wasn't the correct size it was too small so what I did was I used the nut that uh, is inside clutch basket that is what normally screws here I used that nut to actually pull it off uh, pull it through uh, so in order to make the tool work I actually had to drill out the center of the the piece here so the crank will slip completely through First I put the this piece on, put that on, put the nut on for the uh, crank, or for, that would be the clutch basket, screw that all the way down, slid this up to a hit, touch the, that nut, then assembled the tool. And in turn, I just kept on obviously cranking this down, pulling the crank through the bearing that is lubricated on the crank itself and the inside of the bearing so it makes it a little easier until there's a little hole here uh, I believe it's it was like an eighth inch to center from the top of the bearing to the center of the hole and I measured the same distance on the crank that came out of the, the, uh, the original crank and that just basically popped right out with a little slight tap of a hammer. So it seems like it's all bottomed out. It's perfectly where it needs to be. So now, turn this over. Let me uh, take off this tape that I used to hold up the piston rod. So I didn't screw anything up. What I did was I use a piece of tape in between these two uh, head bolts and I centered the piston rod in there and hold it, held it in the center until I got it down, torqued down enough that it can just rest on the sides here. If not, you don't, you tend to have the risk that it will be on the face here. It will be stuck on the face right here or over here 
and you end up screwing up your rod and bending and breaking stuff, it wouldn't be good. So right now, yeah, it seems to be turning really good. All right, that step is done. I think that's gonna be the hardest part of doing this. Okay, I think the next part is going to be grabbing the other side of the crankcase and installing the transmission back in, which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt because I don't remember how it goes, but pick up from there. Okay, here I have the other crankcase side. Uh, again, I'm going to clean the mating surface before I do anything. Make sure all the old uh, Honda Bond is no longer on on the mating surfaces for when I go to seal it. Cut another piece of my cleaning pad, dab it in a little oil, and start scrubbing the ends or the faces. Come back when I get all cleaned up. Okay, so I cleaned the surface, got all the Honda Bond off of it. Um, I'll give it a good wipe, make sure she's nice and dry. And when I read the directions, I'm actually going to be using the other casing, what well, it looks like the other casing to start assembling. And this side actually goes on top uh, to, when I go to seal it up. So make sure this is all clean. I cleaned the other side of the casing. And what I understand on, on the directions that I'm following, uh, I'm going to actually assemble everything first, like the tow transmission and everything on this side of the casing. This is your non-chain side. Uh, so my next step is going to be positioning uh, my transmission in here. Uh, so yeah, I gotta figure that out and see, I don't remember how it goes. so. I'm going to have to figure it out through a little trial and error and see how it goes. Now, when it comes down to my transmission, I cleaned it all and re-lubed it. So all I got to do now is just drop it into place. Looks like there would be a spacer in here. Nope, goes all the way down. Okay, that's in. Wasn't too bad. Now I gotta figure out the shifting forks and the shifting cam. Right, I gotta do some reading on to see exactly how these are positioned. But one goes up and one goes down. It looks like and I'm not 100% sure which one goes where. Uh, so what I did is I, I spun the gear, the gear cam selector by hand uh, through all the gears to make sure it doesn't get bound up, to make sure I have not installed correctly. Uh, not only that, I looked at the pictures I saw online, uh, the orientation that this should be in, and it looks like it's 100%. Uh, the bottom fork, it has initials facing up towards me, K, P, H, and R at the bottom. And the other one is the K, P, H, L on the top, uh, on the top one. Uh, both nipples will be facing the cam so it can slide into the uh, correct um, notches. Uh, now I've I poured oil all over everything. Now I gotta clean off the veining surfaces uh, of oil. And I should be able to put the case back together. Uh, all right, so it doesn't look like I gotta put anything else inside the motor. So what I did is I put the Honda Bond uh, light coat uh, on the outside border of the casing. And then you just want it in this slot right here. 
You don't want it up in here. That's for your oil. So you want to keep it all best as you can away from that. Uh, just a light coat. Just put a small bead on it and rub it on with your finger. Uh, when it when you go to tighten this down, it all spreads out. So a little bit goes a long way. Check everything. Everything looks good. Now you don't have to use Yamabon or Hondabon. I actually use Yamabon. It's the same stuff. But if you're all freaked that you know has to be Honda, go ahead buy a tube of Hondabon. So now I also put the guide pins in on this side of the casing. Now I should be able to drop. I should be able to drop this uh, part of the crankcase on sure there's no random pieces of dirt. She's nice and clean. Fuzzy. Okay. Turn it over. And try to line this all up the best that I can. Just about there, I'm gonna grab a rubber mallet and start ta tapping around uh, the casing here, so it actually falls into place. Oh, it's just going now. There she goes. And don't. It literally just fell right in. I just you saw I just bumped it with my palm in my hand, and it fell right into place. Right, here's the piece of cardboard from earlier, marked F for front, so I know that this will be the front of the motor. I know the sequence on which these bolts drop in, uh, because I'm I'm sure they might be a little bit different. Uh, they kind of look by the naked eye uh, all the same, but I like to keep everything uh, all in the same uh, same spot. So I just made holes and dropped in a piece of cardboard. So one by one, start dropping them in the holes. Should be it. Uh, let me get a number eight millimeter and snug them down loosely by hand. Get them all started. did this I did not go up as you can see I'm just doing by hand just a little snug on it the, uh, the no. torque spec on these are so little I'm just going to use a quarter inch ratchet and just snug them up by hand just go around uh, keep it the torque all even and give one little good twist and should should be good just don't go too crazy with it I mean after all the sealant is doing most of the work something really small uh, I also installed there's a little pin that goes in that cam that's a spring loaded I put that in and at this point I can take the motor and put it on the bench and start assembling some more of it all right got the motor back up on the bench uh, at this point I'm going to I uh, guess I will loosely put the chain through oh uh, Forgot to mention while the the Yamabon is still kind of uh, soft, I rubbed rubbed off the excess on this mating surface right here, uh, so when my my head gasket on, it doesn't get interfered or anything like that. It's not going to affect the ceiling because all the ceiling was inside or on the seam itself. I uh, just didn't want it overhanging over here. Um, now I'm going to start assembling uh, this side of the motor, which will be the gear side, with your stator and your cam chain and all that. I don't think there's a 
direction that the cam chain has to go, whether it's like this or like this. So it doesn't look like it because there's no master link. So I'm just going to slide it in. Get it around the crank. Set it on top of the cam chain guide wheel and between the tensioner. Pretty much self-explanatory on how this goes together. Uh, as long as I kept everything in the same order it came out of when I put it into the box. This is for the starter gear. Slide that in. And uh, small cam side goes in first. And a collar goes on top of that. Then we got a needle bearing here, larger one, that goes on the crankcase, uh, then there's a key way that goes in there, then I'm going to put this keyway on the crank itself, I'm going to face the crank up with the, the keyway facing up, and press that into the slot, take the stator uh, that has your starter ring gear on it and uh, outer magnet for your stator. Line up the keyway, drop it all in. Ooh, looks like I ran into a snag. All right, let me pop this starter gear off. Looks like this has to go on first. Right. Yeah. This go on first and line up the keyway. And the keyway is lined up. I'll be put it on. Okay, now I'm putting the starter gear in. It goes this direction. I line it up and put the pin in. Then the collar. Not a big deal. Looks like that's going to be the washer and then the nut for your uh, stator basket, whatever you would call it. Alright, now I'm going to hold my stator cover with my holder so I can tighten it up. I'm using a workbench to my advantage, so I'm going to tighten it and this will hold itself basically. Uh, now I should probably look for the torque spec for that. Definitely want to torque that to spec. 47 foot pounds. And that bolt uh, is a 17 millimeter in the center. There she goes, 47 foot pounds. Double check. Yep, 47. Okay, next, take this back off and next is I could probably put my cover on this side. I don't see why not. I'm going to need it to line up the timing and everything. Next, since I have it here, I'm going to put this, uh, the, I guess it's the gear selecting uh, sensor. Put that in, it's like right in front of me. Plus, I don't want that little nipple with the spring to pop out. It should just snap right in. I need a little persuasion. There she goes. Put the 10 millimeter nut in there. Now this uh, is a 10 millimeter 
I'm not going to go too crazy with it. I'm just going to snug it up. It has a gasket on it, so you don't need to really go too crazy with it. Where the heck is my... I'm going to just use a quarter inch so I can't put too much uh, torque on it. Okay, that's good. Then I can put the sensor in up on top. That'll be this one. I have no idea what the sensor is. Uh, all these O-rings already have oil on them. So if not, make sure you have a little, little bit of oil on them before you put them in. Put this in. That's good. And that's an eight millimeter. Again, I'm not going to go crazy with it. Just snug it up with a quarter inch ratchet. Snug it up. That's good. And now it looks like I can put my cover on. There's my cover. Uh, I have all the bolts in a certain order, so they can. I want to put them back in the same spot. So I'm going to lay them out on my bench in the same order that I want to put them in. They're eight millimeter. Uh, everybody, uh, I haven't seen anybody actually torque these eight millimeters down to spec. They just snug them up and that's good enough. Now I gotta remove the old gasket, which I have a new one. Okay, I got all this gasket off of that cover. Uh, now I'm going to place my new gasket on. First I'm going to make sure my dowel pins are in uh, correct holes. That will help me ensure that I'm lying, lining up this gasket correctly. Which it really only has one direction to go. But better be safe than sorry. Plus it'll, the dowel pins help hold the gasket when you go to put the cover back on. That's in. <laughs> oh. Good thing the gasket didn't fall off. Alright, now I just have to line up the dowel pins and tap it in. There. <laughs> oh, that's just snapped right into place now, didn't it? <laughs> now we can put my bolts in loosely I think there's one bolt that's smaller than all the rest uh, so but I'm just gonna like I said put them back in the orientation in which I took them out and just so I don't have to really wow think about it that's not good I think that might be the short one. Somehow I mixed them up. Cause that bottomed out like instantly. Yeah, that's the short one. Looks like the short one's going on top. Cause it bottomed out instantly. Yeah, so I've always, always known to uh, do these all by hand at first. Throw them all the way down. Just so you know that uh, you're not mixing up your bolts and potentially rip out your threads. Um, now this cover, uh, I'm sure there's a torque spec for it too, uh, but I'm just gonna snug it up with a, a quarter inch ratchet again. A lot of the parts on the Grom, uh, all you do is really snug it up with a quarter inch uh, because a lot of the times the torque spec that it calls for, you end up snapping a bolt or breaking the cast aluminum somehow. Uh, so, like I, I just know to do everything just by hand, by feel first, to make sure it doesn't, it's not bottoming out, and then just snug it up with a quarter inch ratchet. All right, those are all in. I'm going to snug them up now with the quarter inch, if I can find my quarter inch. 
All right, found my quarter inch ratchet. Now I'm going to uh, snug up all the bolts. Uh, I'm gonna like cross hatch it, go back and forth in a star type pattern to make sure they're all getting torqued the same. And it's going to be nice and flush. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now I just snugged them up just a tiny bit. At this point, I'm gonna give them just a little extra love all the way around to make sure that seals really good. I'm not going too crazy with it. Just a little snug. Okay, I think that side of the motor is done. Take this cap out. I'm removing these caps so when I put the top end and motor on together, I can set the timing. They are already loose from me disassembling the motor so now I want to make sure that this face is nice and clean. What the hell was that? Make sure this face uh, is nice and clean so when I go install my gasket, my head gasket, it's not going to leak or or anything like that. So again, I'm going to use that cleaning pad and carefully uh, rub that surface to make sure it has a nice clean surface for the gasket to make to. want to make sure you don't drop something inside then you gotta take the whole motor back apart and that just sucks looks like I am ready for the piston pulling my rod uh, as far out as I possibly can makes it a little easier to work on now I'm gonna grab my piston and start assembling that now to be on the safe side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and cover up my hole here best that I can so I know I don't have anything fling inside of the motor and just make my day horrible. Coso piston, you got two uh, locking rings you got to put on uh, either side of the wrist pin. Uh, first you do one on one side, so when you push the wrist pin in, it can't go any farther. You want to lube up your wrist pin, make sure it's nice and lubricated so it slides through the piston and rod easier. Uh, I'm going to put one snap ring in first, and then I'll do put the piston, install the piston. Uh, when installing the piston on this COSO, uh, the, you can read COSO. That will be facing up and there will be an arrow facing down uh, for your exhaust and there's a little indent right here that has to be up towards the uh, intake side. First thing I want to do is I want to put the first ring in carefully without damaging any of uh, my piston rings. Uh, so it's really small, kind of a pain in the butt to work with. So you set one end in a groove and just work it around. <laughs> Go figure. Alright, so now at this point, I can remove my microfiber cloths, set the piston down on the rods gently. You don't want to drop them on there. You'll end up damaging them, possibly. Now, at this point, I want to make sure my piston rings are clocked. So 
so they're not facing all the same direction. Because if they're safe facing all the same direction, you will get blow by. They look good. Now, the directions did say to install the piston onto the jug first, then put those in. But I'm just going to slide the jug on and with my fingers collapse the piston rings and slowly work them into the jug then put it all in uh, but first I got to put a gasket on we got a genuine Koso uh, gasket kit for doing this uh, since the old one was damaged I don't like reusing gaskets uh, when it comes down to the head Side. And I'll leave this one. There is a direction to this gasket. You just have to follow the contour of the shiny part and you can see which direction you actually have to put it on. Mine goes on like this. Cam chain. Pull it up. Pass it through. Piston. Pass that through the hole. I probably could have put this on first. Wouldn't have hurt. Now I'm going to put my dial pins. One goes on each side right here. Dial pins. Them in the holes. That will center my gasket. position my gasket so I can put my jug on. Now I'm going to put the jug on. Alright, here's my piston jug. What you want to do before you throw this on is remove your cam guide wheel with the bolt. Uh, then take a little bit of oil on a, your finger and lubricate the bore itself just a little bit. You don't have to drench it. That makes it easier for the piston rings to slide into the jug itself. Uh, when you go to start this up, uh, it's going to smoke a little bit. It's just going to burn off that oil that you just put in there. Okay. Now I can slide this on. I'm going to prop up the piston and set it against the first piston ring and compress it a little bit with my fingernails until it drops inside the jug work my way all the way around it until the piston that section of the piston is inside the jug okay and I'm going to do this one Take your time and you'll slowly get it. Uh, don't jam it on there. You just do a little bit by little bit and work your way through it. Now I don't push this jug all the way on. Uh, I want to feed my cam chain through the hole. Okay. I'm going to hold the cam chain and Press the jug dip it down more. Get it into your home. And it should go right in. For some reason it should be difficult. Just had to wiggle it a little bit and it dropped right in. Okay, just make sure you have your cam chain uh, through that hole. Uh, if not, you have to take it back off and start it over. And that's not fun. Put my dial pins through, and that's good. Now at this point, I'm going to put my 
cam chain guide wheel and install that back into place. I'm not going to uh, tighten it completely. I'm just going to put it in there just to hold the cam chain in its place. Alright, next is I'm going to put the head on itself, but before that I have to make sure my dial pins are in the right spot to cross right here. Cam chain is through. I've got the guide wheel uh, sitting loosely in here. Now, I actually, oh wait, before I get to that, i got to put the actual new head gasket on. Uh, it goes only one direction. So, put it through the holes. And line it up with the dowel pins and drop it on. Voila. This head right here. I did end up getting a new head. Get laid here, open her up. Uh, this is still a two valve head, but it has larger valves, stiffer springs. Uh, and is ported and polished uh, intake and exhaust. So it should let the big board breathe a hell of a lot more. So I actually purchased this off of eBay. Uh, I believe it was a total of 40, 400 bucks off of eBay. Uh, off of from JC Racing. Uh, looks really clean. Uh, I like how it turned out. Uh, looks like he uses like an OEM, brand new OEM, and does all the work to it. Uh, um, at this point, I think I'm just going to slide this head on and then install all the other components. So, but before I do, I want to compare, show you the comparison of stock head compared to this head. This is the OEM head. As you can see, it's uh, got some carbon build up in there. So it's kind of hard to see, but the valves are a little different. Uh, let's see if we can't pick that up. They're a little bit bigger on this head, uh, and there uh, has an angle, uh, four angle valve drop to it. And the valves on the new head are indented a little bit. Uh, then the intake. Is ported. See the difference on that, and the springs. Oh, uh, this that will be really hard to show, but the springs are stiffer and it has different top retainers that are a lot stronger or thicker. Uh, and even the exhaust side, it, uh, can't really see it. The exhaust, and it's just hard to see, but the exhaust is bored out too. So, this head should flow a whole lot better. Uh, Alright, now I'm going to slide this new head on. I'm gonna slide it down all the way. I gotta feed the cam chain through. There it goes. A little tap tap roo. Okay. Uh, now that that's on, I'm going to first put on these small uh, eight millimeter long ones on the side here. I'm going to loosely thread those in just to hold everything together for the time being. I will come back and torque them. Torque it down. Just loosely put this on. Just hand tight. Okay, that's just hand tight. Alright, now 
I'm going to put the head bolts on top here, these four. This bottom, what is it, bottom right, would be the one with the copper washer. That one goes there, and then all the rest are the silver ones. I'm just going to put them on hand tight, and I'll come back and actually torque it down. They're all hand tight now. I'm going to look up the torque spec for all of that and torque them down the spec. Okay, I'm going to torque these down. First, I'm going to start with the four uh, head bolts itself. Uh, they're 18 foot pounds. I'm going to do them in an X pattern. These are 12 millimeter uh, nuts at 18 foot pounds. I'm going to start with the crush washer style copper washer at the bottom. Better angle here. Okay. I'm do a little bit there, then go to this side and do that one. I'm gonna do each of all of them just a little bit by little bit until I get to the torque spec. Check them all. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay, 18 foot pounds. Now, when it comes down to these side ones, these eight millimeter ones, I'm just going to just snug those up. I'm not even going to torque them down to spec. Just snug them up. with a, a quarter inch ratchet and don't just don't go crazy with it. It should be fine. Just a little turn and that's set. Alright, uh, next step is going to be installing the cam valve uh, rockers and actually setting the timing. Okay, so I got my cam out of uh, my old head. I'm going to put that in first. Uh, this is a Koso uh, cam. Put that in carefully. Make sure this is all oiled up before you install it. Okay, once that's set into place, you want to put your valves in. Now your valves are different, uh, whenever you take them out of your head you want to make sure you remember which one goes where. Uh, your valves will have uh, an I and an E on it, uh, so make sure you have them in the right spot. Alright, I got the T set up to the notch here, then I'm going to gently put the cam, or uh, the sprocket on. This might take a few times on and off. I'm going to work it onto the chain first. Okay, that T is still lined up. Let's see if I can get it. First try here. There should be a ton of slack in the chain to get it on the sprocket because I don't have my the tensioner on. And that looks good. I think I got it. Now I can put my bolt in for the cam gear. Uh, sprocket front one put that in uh, uh, 
just loosely. Uh, now I'm going to tighten the 10 millimeter here for the, the guide. Okay, now I am installing the cam gear selector roller and the cam, uh, the gear selecting lever. Um, the number 10 that goes onto the wheel itself, put a little bit of red thread lock on it and screw it in. Uh, it's a 10 millimeter. Uh, make sure you have the, the spring for it facing the correct direction. Uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory when you look at it. Uh, then just tighten that down. I'm sure there's a torque spec for this, but I'm just going to go give a good snug. Snug. Uh, when I snug it down, I'll pu I push down on it. Uh, if not, it will get bound up on the cam itself. Uh, then it looks like I'm going to put the uh, cam selecting plate on. The one I'm putting on is modified so it can find neutral easier. Uh, it has these two doll pins in the center. They're offset from the hole itself. So you just have to line that up carefully. This is going to be, I'm going to put those dowel pins in first. It makes it easier, hopefully. This part here is where it, the bolt snapped off and I had to rip apart the whole motor. Now I'm going to use a flat screwdriver and push down on the roller so I can get that out of the way to put the cam selecting plate in. Set. I'll slide right onto the pins. Go with that. And voila. Now I can put the bolt that snapped off in. Put, I put a little thread lock on that also. And tighten that a little bit. I'm not torquing this down to whatever spec it told me because you know what happened? It snapped off and I had to rip the whole motor apart. So I'm just going to snug it up with an Allen wrench and call it good. Good. That's it. Alright. Basically I'm back to square one when I was doing those upgrades. So now, next would be, I believe the clutch, I believe the clutch, actually there's gears that go on here, I don't know, I'm probably going to call quits for today, and I'll pick up tomorrow and finish assembling this and put it in. Alright guys, that's going to finish up the part 3 of the Honda Grom motor uh, rebuild. Uh, it was getting a little long, so I uh, decided to cut it off a little early. So, actually I'm filming this uh, outro after the fact I'm editing the video. Uh, and it was just getting way too long. I think uh, after this, uh, this Grom motor rebuild, uh, series I don't think I'm, I'm gonna take a break from how-to videos for a while it's just such a pain in the butt to freaking edit so but I'm gladly uh, to answer anybody's questions if they have them so uh, 
But yeah, this is gonna end this video. Stick around for part four of the Honda Grom uh, motor rebuild. I'll be in, uh, finishing putting the motor back together, installing it into the Grom, and hopefully starting it and running into no problems. Even if I do run problems, I'm still gonna fi film it and I will post it. If it blows up, it blows up. I'd rather share it with you guys and than hide the fact that, you know, that I'm saying like I'm perfect, which I'm nobody's perfect in the world, so. Uh, if you find this uh, video entertaining or, or uh, helpful, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, Till next time, be safe out there. Take it easy.